Okay, this is going to be the Fool's Journey Part 2. And uh, <clears throat> in Part 1 we consider the Fool is coming down from the mountain um, where there was isolation, probably. And he's re-entering society or beginning to deal with people again. And he doesn't know that much. Uh, even though he's experienced in different areas of life, uh, I think the idea is that he is not that knowledgeable in a new area. So the first person he meets, my instructions were, the fool's walking along the road. He, the first person he meets is the magician, what happens? So from the earlier video, there were various things said. So let's see at this point... Um, we decide that the snake biting its tail here um, uh, a snake is an animal that sheds its skin from time to time and so we can say that the magician understands the value of um, of change or um, getting rid of um, conditions or people or ideas or opinions that are really that that have outgrown their usefulness, because at a certain point in life, um, ideas that somebody's going to come and help you out, let's say, are useful. But at a certain point, maybe what's more important is that you learn to stand alone, and you learn to think for yourself, for instance. And so the snake biting its tail here um, is to an extent, an indication that, that the, the magician, maybe he, he can be a magician because he's willing to let go of the past and he's willing to um, remove the clothing or remove the ideas or remove his, his source of protection and that provides space for new ideas and new beginnings and so on. So anyway, let's, let's see if the magician says to the fool, uh, part of your journey is going to involve learning to let go. And the fool says, thank you very much, and moves on his way. And the next person he meets is the high priestess. And so we begin and we look at the high priestess and figure out what this particular card can mean, or what kinds of experiences the fool would have with the high priestess. So here we've got sunshine and we're out of doors. Here we're inside some kind of building. So the atmosphere is different. This may be daytime, this may be nighttime. And the magician, he's kind of young, and the high priest says he's young as well. Uh, later we'll find with the emperor, that looks like an older individual. But there's a similar kind of age between these two, the magician and the high priestess. So what happens when the fool meets the high priestess? How does he approach her, or how would you approach the high priestess? It's in a building... It's dark. It's probably a good idea to take your shoes off at the door. With, with the magician, it's sort of light-hearted, and maybe he's standing by the side of the road. And um, he can handle noise, and he doesn't really mind um, boisterous behavior, let's say. Whereas with the high priestess, there's tranquility, there's peace, there's quiet. There's somehow there's a seriousness about this particular card that you, you can wander up to the magician and say, hello, how's it going, and blah, 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 and start having a conversation. And maybe you can be loud and obnoxious, and the magician wouldn't mind. Whereas with the high priestess, somehow she expects a different type of behavior on the part of the fool or on the part of anybody who is going to approach her. And so the, it's serious. You ought to be respectful as well when dealing with the high priestess. Because, not so much because it's religion, but because of her position and the atmosphere around her. So what does the, the fool say to the magician? I mean, to the, uh, the high priestess. What could he ask her? Maybe he says to her, the magician told me I have to learn to handle change. What do you have to say about that? And so she might answer. She has the moon. 
beneath our feet here and the moon is the moon is the the satellite of the earth and it moves quickly through the zodiac goes through this whole zodiac it takes the sun a whole year it takes the moon about 28 days so this is can indicate it's a card of quick change or cycles that don't take too long to complete and so she may agree that yes you're going to have to learn or it's a good idea to learn how to change and to learn how to make quick uh, I don't want to say make quick changes but to make to, to be able to adapt quickly to any conditions that may come along um, okay at, at this point some, sometimes I stop here and ramble on for hours other times at this moment um, I can't think of anything else to say at the moment so and when this happens what you do is you either stay there and try and make something happen or you take the next card and see what happens next because sometimes you need two and you're comparing these two other times you need three so the high priest says sends a fool on his way and what does she maybe she gives him a motto or a piece of philosophy or a piece of advice and what would the high priestess's advice be to the fool and just at the moment I have no idea what to say about that so let's say she said I don't want to put the the camera on on pause and um, uh, and then pick up again so let's just say she tells him you have to learn to adapt quickly okay so